No matter your harvest goals, we all enjoy learning more about the deer that we're chasing in the woods or maybe we've already harvested. And age is something that interests a lot of us is, you know, what's the age of this buck? We're receiving a lot of questions on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, getting questions, how old is this buck? We've shared in the past videos where we've dived into the body characteristics we're looking for when estimating the age of a buck. And we've done that by sharing Moultrie Mobile images and videos and have really slowed that down, looked at it, gotten different angles, taken the time to look at bucks and their body characteristics. If you wanna check that out and learn more and really hone your estimating skills, well, I encourage you to check out the link in the description. However, Looking at trail cameras is one thing. Estimating that buck on the hoof while you're hunting, that's something else. And there's a few tips we use to help us better estimate the age of a buck while we're hunting. Before we dive into some techniques we use while hunting, I think it's important to go ahead and do a quick overview of general body characteristics of certain age class deer. Let's start with yearling bucks. Now, don't look at the antlers. On ag country, a yearling buck could be a great looking deer. Close can't be forced. Yearling may be a spike or a little forky. So let's not look at the antlers. We're looking at those body characteristics. No matter the habitat type you're hunting, within your population, your age class bucks are gonna show similar characteristics for the most part. So those yearling bucks, that neck is gonna break very high. It's gonna be that long neck, long leg, slender body, and it's not gonna look like a mature doe. That's probably a yearling buck. A two-year-old buck, if you covered up those antlers, probably gonna look like a mature doe that's using the area you're hunting. Its body's gonna be a little more developed. Those legs are gonna look a little shorter compared to a yearling, but that neck is still gonna break pretty high. Again, a great rule of thumb, cover up those antlers, looks like a mature doe, probably a two-year-old. Three-year-old bucks, those hams and shoulders are gonna be about the same size. They're gonna be more developed. That body's gonna be a little fuller. However, that belly is gonna be pretty flat. Cover up the antlers. He's gonna look a little more mature than a big old doe. That neck's gonna kind of break right before his brisket that deer is going to be looking real good. He's going to be toned almost like a racehorse. A mature buck, we're calling four years or older, he's going to have larger shoulders than his hams on average. That chest is going to be really full. His neck is going to merge down with his brisket and he's going to have what we call a buffalo chest, almost like a big old American bison. He's going to be heavy in the front, and light in the back. If you took a two by four and set it right behind his front legs, picked him up, he'd tilt forward. That's gonna be a mature buck. Now remember, we're not looking at the antlers. There's only a couple times that we're looking at antlers to kind of help us estimate the age of a buck, and I'll share those later. But at this time, if we cover up the antlers, look at those body characteristics, no matter where you're hunting, those characteristics are what we're looking for for age classes, yearling, two-year-old, three-year-old, and a mature buck. Sitting on your phone, looking at the Moultrie mobile app, it's fun taking time, blowing those pictures up, slowing the videos down, and really studying bucks to look at their body characteristics. You have a lot of time, but in a hunting situation, you may only have a few moments to estimate the age of the buck and decide whether to pull the trigger or not if you're looking to tag a deer based on his age. One thing I really like to do to set us up for success to estimate a buck's age while hunting is our blind and stand placement. I don't wanna set our stand or blind right on the deer trail and have that deer come head on to us really fast and be on top of us and have to make those really fast decisions. If I can back off that trail 15, 20 yards, not only is that helping us with our scent, getting it away from that trail, but it's also giving us time to estimate that deer's age. 
ideally that deer is going to be moving broadside in front of you to give you a good shot opportunity or as he passes you a good quartering away opportunity. That gives you a lot of time to look at the body characteristics. Now, I know that doesn't always happen and sometimes those deer come in head on or they come in behind you and you don't know it and they're kind of walking away. Now, this is why it's really important not to be looking at those antlers because a deer that's coming head on at you or away looks really big. Those antlers are really what capture your attention. You kind of forget about the body and you're looking at those antlers. So if you can avoid those situations and let that deer pass in front of you, get a good look at them, that's great. But when those deer do come in head on to you or come to the base of your stand, a few things I'm looking at is I'm really looking at their shoulders. How broad are their shoulders as I'm looking down on them? Are they real narrow or do they almost look like they're apart, have a little muscle to them and that buck is kind of going back and forth, you know, as he walks. He's going to have those big shoulders if he's a mature deer. When that deer comes underneath the standard blind, that's one time I am looking at antlers. Now I'm not looking at points or width, I'm looking at the bases. Usually when they're that close, you can get a pretty good eye on the bases of those antlers. A deer's eye is typically about four inches in diameter, and if those bases are larger than that deer's eye, that deer's probably a more mature deer. So if I get a really good look at his bases looking down on them, I see that walk, kind of wide shoulders even looking down, that's going to be a deer I want to pull the trigger on and put my tag around. The only other time I'm really looking at antlers to estimate a deer's age, well, it's kind of as a cheat sheet. I'm looking at those antlers to just see if that's a buck that we know from trail camera history. Yeah, that's Ed Turner for sure. That we've already decided we would like to tag if given the opportunity. Remember, antler development could change year to year. Like this year, it's a drought season. Antler development may not be as good in the area that you're hunting this year because of the drought. Next year, we may have a wet year, great growing season, and antlers just look great. Or maybe last year, you were watching a buck and you really were hoping he'd blow up this year, but with this drought, he just didn't do much. So it's really important to not look at antlers, but at the body characteristics. I'm reminded of a buck we call Ringer 8. He was a big, old, mature buck, and one year, man, his antlers were just very small. And if we didn't know that buck from years past and trail camera history and encounters, we would have looked at those antlers and gone, man, from a distance, that deer's just a spike with some trash on it. He's really not a very large deer, but he was an old warrior, a big bruiser of the woods. Remember old Swoops? Probably 10 years old, we estimate, based on our history with him. His antlers, when Grant harvested him, were fairly small, but man, did he have a big old body on him. His teeth were worn down. That was an old buck, and what a great buck to finally close the chapter on. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. When deer are moving, it can be tough to estimate their age on the hoof. Hunting near areas that slow deer down just for a few moments to be able to get a good look at them, that's another key to estimating a buck's age while hunting. Food plots are a great example of this. Bucks are gonna come out, they're going to a destination usually, gonna grab a few bites to eat, and during that time, you're gonna have some time to look them over. Be patient and use that time as they're feeding to look at their body characteristics. Now, if they come out and they're head down, hitting that green cover forage, wait until they bring their head up. That's where you're gonna see where that neck breaks. Is it high? or does it still merge in with the chest deep into the brisket? 
and wait for that deer to turn broadside, if you will. So you can look at those hams and those shoulders and compare the size. Are they the same size or are those shoulders larger than the hams? Individual bucks in a food plot may look really good, but if there's multiple deer out in the plot, does, fawns, yearling bucks, take the time to study their buy characteristics and compare them to the buck you're looking at. Is that buck much larger than a mature doe that's been feeding in front of you for 20 minutes? It's probably a shooter. Does that buck come out and he's about the same size of another yearling buck you were watching all afternoon, but this buck now has larger antlers, but the same body size. Maybe he's just a standout yearling buck. Gonna really be something as he gets some age to him. Compare the body sizes with other deer in the area. That can be a great tool to slow down and really look and estimate a buck's age. Now, during the pre-rut, things are starting to heat up. Deer are moving a bit more. Hunting near scrapes can be a very effective technique, but they can also be great for making that deer stop and get a good look at his body characteristics. If you're hunting that scrape and you're looking at that scrape kind of perpendicular to where deer are gonna be traveling and they can come into that scrape and stop broadside, and as they lift their head to maybe check that overhanging limb, Really look and see where that neck breaks, look at those shoulders, and decide whether you're pulling the trigger or not. Another thing to keep in mind is that buck weights will likely change throughout the hunting season. During the early season, they've packed on a lot of food during the growing season, and they're looking maybe real chunky or really big. But they could lose up to 30% of their weight through the course of the pre-rut and rut. An early season buck is gonna look a lot different than a late season buck. However, even though they've lost that weight, a mature buck is still gonna have those really big shoulders. Their legs may look a little longer, their neck may look like it breaks a little higher, but those shoulders are still gonna be very well defined and larger compared to their hams. I remember a few years ago, I was hunting out of a redneck blind overlooking a power line easement, and it was the last day of Missouri's firearm season. The peak of the rut it was tailing off, deer had been running really hard, bucks had been looking for does and had used a lot of calories running up and down mountains here at the Proving Grounds. And I remember watching and I saw a deer step out into the power line. And the first thing I noticed about that deer, I didn't have my burst scope on him, didn't have binos or anything. As soon as he stepped out, about 200 yards away, I went, oh my word, look at those shoulders. And you can see as he's walking, he looks very thin throughout most of his body, but his shoulders were very well developed. And that was a mature buck that we knew from history, but those shoulders were the key giveaway. Trash man, Grant tagged years ago, during Missouri's alternative season. That was post rut, old trash man walked out, his neck looked like it broke high. You could tell he had lost a lot of weight, but again, those shoulders really stood out. Four year old plus, ladies and gentlemen, meet the trash man up close and personal. So even though deer are gonna lose weight throughout the hunting season, really start looking at those shoulders Mature bucks are gonna maintain those large shoulders compared to their hams. And when you get into the late season, if you don't know the buck based on past history, trail cameras, encounters, whatnot, those shoulders, they can be a giveaway. Don't get psyched out and think, man, that's just a small bodied deer. They've probably lost a lot of weight during the rut. No matter your harvest goals, it's always interesting to estimate a buck's age. You kind of wonder how long has that old warrior been out there roaming the woods. Once you get that deer on the ground, take a look at its jawbone. You know, a lot of people send us pictures of bucks they're gripping and grinning with, you know, in January or February, and they ask us how old was this buck? And it's really tough to look at a picture of a buck on the ground and, and estimate its age. So as we're going into deer season, if you're really interested in looking at 
what a deer's actual age is, pull that jawbone, and there's some even more advanced science. You can take out the front incisors and send them into a lab and they can give you the exact age. But we've shared videos on this in the past. If you're really interested in learning more about maybe the age dynamic where you hunt or the buck you harvested, make sure you check out that video. The link will be in the description. But no matter what your harvest goals are, it's important to get outside and enjoy creation and have fun. But more importantly than that, to listen to the creator and the purpose he has for your life. Thanks for watching, Growing Deer.